Okay, welcome to podcast 45, and we hopefully we'll take a very quick look at plant anatomy, just so you kind of have a picture of the different tissues and, and so on of plants, uh, if they are asked about on the exam. Um, so... Uh, let's begin. Uh, our focus when we talk about plant anatomy, how they're built, uh, would be on angiosperms, the flowering plants. Um, all the vascular plants have certain similarities, uh, but this will be focusing on the flowering plants. Remember there are two classes of flowering plants that are important. Uh, they are the monocots and the dicots. Um, monocots are, have certain characteristics that you ought to try to just commit to memory. Um, they have uh, their name, this cot, comes from a, the term for a, a seed leaf, seed leaf, um, that is a leaf found inside the seed. Duh. And um, what it does actually is, is it is almost like a, a funnel, a drinking straw, if you will, for the endosperm, which would be here, the starch, the endosperm starch food for the baby. The cotyledon kind of allows that starch to be sucked up into the baby plant. Um, so monocots have one cotyledon. Okay, and dicots have two cotyledons. Um, when well, we'll hopefully we'll have a chance to open up some seeds and and look at them. So, two seed leaves down here, and the seeds one up here. Dicot means two. Uh, the monocots also have parallel veins. So, if you think of a grass plant where the veins are running up and down, that's parallel venation. Um, the dicots have netted veins, so like a maple leaf, for example, would be a dicot. Um, this is a stem that is cut in cross sections, so you're, you've whacked across the stem and now we're looking at it. And in monocots, the vascular tissue, which is in tubes, is pretty... Um, uh, scattered throughout. I, that's how I prefer to think of it is just scattered throughout the plant stem. But in a dicot, the vascular tissue has a more organized structure like in a ring. The bundles of vascular tissue are in a ring. Uh, in monocots, the roots are far more thin and fibrous. And one root is not bigger than another. Again, think grass. When you think monocots, you should be bringing to mind grasses. Okay. Okay. Not only that, but dicots, you're going to see the big thick tap, tap root with some branches sticking out from that. So think of a carrot. A carrot is a huge tap root. Okay? It's got a main root and then you'd find little teeny weeny roots coming off of it. Uh, monocots, the floral parts, the petals, the stamens, things like that, are in multiples of three generally speaking, whereas in dicots, they are in multiples of four and five. Um, so if you look at a flower and it's got five petals, then generally speaking, that's going to be a dicot. Okay. Um, roots and shoots. Those, these are two main areas of anatomy. First of all, please note that no algae ever had them. Roots and shoots contain vascular tissue, um, and uh, so we don't really see these until we get into the ferns and so on. Um, the um, Roots and shoots are adaptations to land and dealing with these very different environments, soil and air, and the very different jobs plants have to do uh, in these two regions. Soil is providing water and, and minerals dissolved in water. So the roots have to be able to take in water, which means they can't be protected. They've got to be able to take in water by way of osmosis. So we can't cover them with wax and, and protect them from water loss and stuff like that. Up here, however, uh, we are going to be exposed to air, so we've got to protect these leaves from drying out. So these are covered with a waxy coating to prevent them from drying out, but at the same time, we do have to take in CO2 up here, so we can't completely cover them with wax. So there's some issues, but the shoot, again, meant for absorbing light. 
um, and this stuff meant for absorbing water. Okay, vascular tissue is represented by these blue lines. Uh, so uh, it's like tubes going up and down the plant and into each leaf and into each root and so on, uh, funneling water and, and uh, food up and down in large amounts. Please remember these terms. Vascular tissue is made up of two types, xylem, which transports water up the plant uh, from the roots and phloem which transports food down from the shoots okay uh, so xylem and phloem you need to think of having a set of garden hoses one set goes up and the other set goes down one is taking food down one is taking water up okay a little bit of detail on roots functions of course are to anchor the plant into the soil and we already talked about absorbing minerals and water also they do store food again think of a carrot that's why we eat a carrot it's full of starch um, we already talked about the two types of roots fibrous um, and tap so you should be aware of those um, let's see uh, root hairs you should know what those are root hairs are very very fine projections that come off the tips of roots um, that allow for an increased surface area they are very thin pieces of epidermal or skin like tissue and they increase the surface area so this thing can have maximum H2O absorbing abilities okay root hairs are important to know so they increase the absorptive surface area okay again think about structure fitting function these very fine thin hairs in large numbers relates to exactly what it's doing increasing surface area uh, I often see questions about this on the AP exam so I'm going to star this and ask that you try your best to remember um, mutualistic symbiotic relationships this is going to take us back to our ecology unit both species benefit it is a relationship in which two different species are closely connected and they both benefit uh, mycorrhizae mycorrhizae is a symbiotic mutualistic relationship between a fungus and a plant specifically plant roots and essentially what is um, happening is the fungus is entwined and in and around and, and essentially part of the plant root and of course if you look all of this is essentially fungus coming off of this you can see the plant root right there and the plant root um, the, I'm sorry the fungus is providing additional surface area and um, to the plant so that it can increase its water absorption from the soil the plant however is feeding the fungus with the food that it produces it is providing some of that food to the uh, to the fungus nodules if you look here let me try to get rid of my okay um, you have a plant root with these little nodes or nodules on it these are chock full of bacteria uh, they are nitrogen fixing bacteria again if you think back to ecology and our nutrient cycles our biogeochemical cycles cycling nutrients through the environment one important nutrient that we have to cycle is nitrogen the, the bacteria in these little nodules will take in nitrogen gas N2, which is inert from the air, convert it to a usable form, ammonia usually, that the plants can use. Once the plants have this in their tissues, then animals can eat the plants and get the nitrogen. So nitrogen fixing bacteria, symbiosis, they are providing usable nitrogen to the plant and of course the plant is giving them a place to live food etc all right so um, shoots I don't think we need to worry uh, you should know with regard to the shoots that the uh, the tips are where the growth occurs uh, they are called apical meristems um, but I don't think you need to know all this stuff about the leaves. I do think you should be aware of these words. 
in particular this word modified stems. There are some stems that don't look like stems at all. Uh, there are stems that act like runners going across the surface of the ground, uh, like what strawberries grow off of. They're called stolons. Nobody's going to ask you about this. Potatoes, in fact, we pull them out of the ground and think they're roots, but they're actually swollen modified stem, and we call them a tuber. Um, onion bulbs are modified stems, but this is the one you should know. It is a horizontal underground stem, rhizome. Ferns have them too. So this is technically a stem. These are leaves coming off of this modified underground stem. And these here are the roots. So rhizome, OK? Um, OK, yeah, and rhizomes are essentially a way of just spreading out, kind of like this is spreading out, but you're spreading out underground and asexually reproducing, sending up another set of leaves somewhere else. Um, function of leaves, of course, you know, is photosynthesis. They are broad and flat, so they are acting like great big solar panels to collect as much sunlight as possible. Please, again, think structure fits function broad, flat leaves are acting like solar panels, okay? They are also for gas exchange. Plants have to take in CO2. The leaves are where that happens as well. There's little holes on the bottom, stomata. Um, Unfortunately, plants also do lose water through those holes, and that's called transpiration, water loss uh, through the leaves of a, a plant through those stomata, and we'll talk about that a lot more later. There are lots of modified leaves, just like there were modified stems. Hard to believe these spines are actually leaves, but they are. They are highly modified for protection uh, because uh, animals are so starved for water uh, in a desert situation. These plants have to really work hard to protect themselves. Tendrils allow plants to crawl up a, a post or another plant to get sunlight. Uh, succulent leaves are for water storage. Colored leaves, which is what the actual flower of a poinsettia plant is this little, these little guys right in here. These red, big red things are just mo modified leaves, but uh, do the same thing as petals. All right, uh, attracting pollinators and so on. Um, all right. You should have some awareness of the structure of a leaf. We'll talk more about this with photosynthesis. But you know the waxy layer up top, the photosynthetic layers in the middle, uh, uh, the stomata where the CO2 can enter the leaf. We will talk about this during photosynthesis, though, so I'll skip that for now. Um, both systems depend on uh, the other. Um, that's obvious. Uh, sugars are made in the leaves uh, and taken down to the roots. Of course, water is taken up. They're, they're dependent. Okay? Uh, all right. You need this. Dermal tissue is the, uh, if you can see, we have, uh, let me see. Let me just pick right here. We've cut across the stem, so the outer part is the dermal or epidermis skin tissue of the plant. Um, the middle stuff, I want you to think of this as like packing peanuts. It's the stuffing. This is called ground tissue. And then these purple regions are the or these long tubes of vascular tissue that we've cut across. That's the vascular tissue. Okay, so dermal tissue obviously is mainly for protection, a thin layer of protective stuff. Um, most plant tissue is this ground tissue. You need to think of it as kind of the stuffing. It is used for lots of different purposes, photosynthesis being a majorly important one up here in the leaves, uh, but also it's used for food storage down here in the roots. So it can do a variety of things depending on where it is. And of course, vascular tissue transports stuff from up top to down low and vice versa. Um, you need to remember xylem and phloem, the two types of vascular tissue. Um, major plant cell types uh, that make up all the tissues of a plant. There are five. You should know, um, well, they are parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, and then these two. 
These two are the two you should really know because these make up the vascular tissue, the plumbing that carries food and water. Um, vessel elements and tracheids are these xylem cells, and so they are carrying water. The uh, sieve tube members are phloem cells, and they are carrying food down the plant. Um, this parenchyma is what makes up ground tissue, so it can have a whole lot of different purposes. It is kind of like general plant tissue, and if it, depending on where it is, it can be doing any number of different things. These two tend mostly to be supportive. Cholenchyma and sclerenchyma are thickened and hardened and um, uh, generally supportive. Uh, so, uh, parenchyma, just as we said, is, is, um, has bunches of functions, storage, f photosynthesis. Usually the cells are really thin-walled and uh, are doing important metabolic activities inside. Cholenchyma are thicker. You can see these have thicker cell walls here. Oh, actually, that wouldn't be it there. It's right in here. Sorry. Um, uh, they help support a plant, but can stretch and don't restrain its growth. So um, that implies a certain amount of flexibility as well. Sclerenchyma are thick, walled, and rigid, and uh, they are uh, mostly dead at maturity. Uh, they are really hardened. They're not going to um, uh, be allowed any any more growth. Um, they are for support. They make up wood in a tree trunk. Uh, usually they are the remnants of the vessel elements and the tracheids that have been left behind and, and hardened to make that thing we know as a tree trunk. Um, all right. Uh, vascular tissue. Uh, two types. The tracheids, as you can see over here, are kind of long and skinny with tapered, tapered, closed ends. Okay, the water flows. Remember, this is the these are the xylem structures. These are tracheids I'm talking about right now, and the water gets through these pores as it's moving up the plant. Um, these are more primitive, okay? The more advanced uh, xylem cells are the vessel elements. They're wider. Um, they have, they are cells connected end to end with, with uh, slits in between the cells so the water can just shoot straight through. Um, uh, so uh, if you are looking at, um, with an electron micrograph, um, you can see the uh, vessel elements and the tracheids are smaller. Okay, um, vessel elements. They are dead at functional maturity. So when uh, they are fully mature, still allowing uh, water to flow, but they are dead cells and they are hardened and they are very supportive as well. So you need to think of this being kind of empty pipes, which do very efficiently move water. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, sieve tube members are also tubes. These are, however, are carrying food down the plant, not water up the plant. Remember, these are associated with phloem, so sieve tube members. These are living cells when they are mature, but again, they have to be hollow so the food can come down the plant. So they do have cells next to them called companion cells that have a nucleus and organelles and everything that help keep these guys alive. Okay, um, But these are what's going to allow the um, nutrients to move down the plant. Uh, okay. Yeah, the sieve plate is the name for the barrier between the two, but you can see it has holes in it. All right, uh, moving on. Let's see if there's anything new on this side that you need. I don't think so. We've already talked about all of that. Okay, uh, vascular tissue and stems. I talked with you about the arrangement of the tissues and a dicot versus a monocot. Please note, 
Both of them have um, epidermis, a thin single cell layer on the outside, on the outside for protection. Um, they have, both have ground tissue. The ground tissue is all this stuff in the middle, this, all this all around here, the ground tissue. But what's key are the vascular tissue bundles. This is vascular tissue, vascular tissue, vascular. You can see in this dicot, the vascular tissue makes a ring shape. In the monocot, it's just scattered in bundles all around throughout the stem. Okay, um, so vascular tissues in a ring and in a monocot it is wildly scattered about. Okay, in a root again we see the epidermis covering the outside, we see cortex all around for food storage, etc. And that ring of vascular tissue tends to be in the very center and in a dicot it forms an X. The xylem makes an X and phloem packs in between the arms of the X and so they're bundled together in the middle allowing again the water to go up, the food to come down into the root and be stored. Okay, um, That's a monocot root, same basic deal. Here's your epidermis, uh, your xylem and phloem are on the inside, ground tissue out here. Um, you know what, we'll maybe talk about those later, maybe not. Okay. Um, all right, that's it. I hope you got something out of that, and we'll catch you at the next podcast. Take care. Have a good one.